We're talking about a phenomenon that most of us have experienced firsthand in our own lives. It can be illustrated by this situation that you probably have found yourself in. You are about to engage in some business enterprise, or you're about to spend some money with some other people to buy a house, or you're going to buy a car together, or you're going to buy a stereo together. And you determine in your own mind, you are going to certainly pay your way and even be generous in this situation. You're not going to be petty. You're going to pay, if anything, a little more than everybody else, if that's necessary. And then it comes to the actual moment of laying down the cash or writing out the check. And despite all your generous desire to be more than fair in the payment of your part of the purchase, you find growing within you a kind of protective trade attitude that is making you be conscious that you don't want to risk too much money on this, you don't want to give more than everybody else, and you certainly want, finally, to get away with giving as little as possible and yet being part of the enterprise. And uh, there come moments in the whole experience when you wonder, why does that happen? Why is it that I set out at one moment to be more than generous and to pay more than my share of this enterprise? And then when I come to the actual moment when I have to write out the check or lay down the money, I find working within me a kind of petty, selfish, worried, anxious part that doesn't want to give more than it can get away with giving. Why do we find ourselves, on the one hand, wanting to be generous and unselfish, and on the other, wanting to be protective and petty and anxious about our resources. It's the same, you remember, when you get into difficulties with your bank account. You run into overdraft, and you begin to worry and fret and be anxious, and you're turn over in bed at night, and your tummy is tied up in knots, and you're strained and filled with stress, and then at last, of course, you know the outcome eventually. You fight your way through it one way or another. It comes out usually in ways that you least expect. And so the next time you determine that this ever happens, you will relax. You will just trust to whatever that force is that enables you to pull out of the most disastrous financial situations, and you will depend on just that principle that everything works out all right in the end, and you know that from your last experience. And then you come to the same situation all over again. Your overdraft is through to you in the mail, and before you know it, that night, you're fretting and anxious all over again, you're twisting and turning, your stomach is churned up, and you're unable to sleep. And so you keep repeating that pattern. There seems to be within you one side of you that says, things are going to come out all right. It, it will come all out all right. It did before. There's somebody looking after me. There's some guy up there who is keeping an eye on things. There's some force of providence that works and makes everything turn out all right in the end. So I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to get anxious. And yet there's another part of you that when the moment comes, forces you, it seems, to get worried and to get anxious so that your mind goes back and back onto the figures and you go over and over them in your head, trying to assure yourself that it's going to work out all right. Now, why does that take place? Why is it that you, with one part of you, your mind, it seems, can see the thing as it really is? and can depend on the thing working out. And it's as if you somehow commit your security, your material and your financial security into the hands of general providence. And you believe that as it's worked out in the past, and as you've come, you've come through all kinds of things in the past, so it will happen in the present. And yet there's another part of you 
that gets worried and anxious and frets so that you cannot control it. It's as if there's another being inside you, like Robert Louis Stevenson's Mr. Hyde that dwelt in the generous, loving Dr. Jekyll. Inside him there was this ugly, violent Mr. Hyde. It's as if you have two personalities. And, of course, this ties up exactly with the explanation of reality and the creation and existence of our own lives that has been passed on to us by that remarkable man that lived in the first century, that man Jesus of Nazareth. He pointed out that we were made to depend for our financial security on our God, on the Creator that made us, that his Father had put you here on earth to do something that only you can do, and he had so arranged the economy of the world and of this nation that you would be able to meet all your needs with the finances and the material provisions that he would make for you. And that was the way you were meant to live, depending on the Creator who is your Father and who loves you for all that you need. And so your mind has a memory of that, and indeed your conscience has more than a memory of it, your conscience actually continues to draw you back into that kind of attitude. That's the part of you that says, it's going to work out all, all right in the end. It's going to come out all right. It has done in the past. It will do in the present. You may not know it's God. You may not talk about, about him as God. You may say, well, the man up there. You may say, oh, well, providence or it or the force is with me. You may ascribe it to all kinds of things. But there's something inside you that says, it's going to work out all right. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. But then what we human beings have done over the centuries, we determined we would not live that way. We would not depend on this maker and this creator to supply us with all that we needed. We would live our lives our own way and we would get what we needed ourselves. As a result of that, of course, the creator could no longer supply for us and provide for us. And we became very worried and anxious. We saw there were five billion of us in this world and there are only so many resources, so we'd better get as many of them as we can. And it was then that we began to see that we have to establish our own security and our own material prosperity by our own efforts, by grabbing as much of the money, as much as the food, as much of the shelter, as much of the clothing of this world as we can. And that's why, of course, our parents passed on to us. They said, now listen, nobody will look after you but yourself, so you'd better look out for yourself. And so there developed in us human beings an attitude that thought that we were responsible for providing always for ourselves and that nobody else would if we failed. So there developed down through the centuries a race of mankind that continued to feel that it was dependent on itself for grabbing from the world what food, shelter and clothing it needed to keep itself alive. And that nature, that personality was bred into our forefathers and our grandfathers and our great-grandfathers for years and years and years. And it's that personality that has been passed on to us by even our good dads and mums. We have a nature that is twisted that is perverted. It doesn't live the way it was meant to live. It doesn't w live the way it was intended to, depending on the provisions of an infinite Father who loves us and takes care of us. It, was, uh, it became a nature that depended on the world of things and of grabbing as many of those things as it, as it possibly could. That's the nature that you and I are faced with. So even though we hear the words of that man Jesus when he says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your clothes, what you'll put on, or about your food, what you shall eat. Look at the lilies of the field. They do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father has clothed them. Are you not of much more value than they? Even though we hear that and we believe that that's possibly true, our nature prevents us depending on that and prevents us having the peace that we were meant to have in regard to our material security. Are there any other ways in which this nature, this old nature, the Bible calls it an old nature, sometimes it calls it an old self, but are there any other ways in which this old perverted nature spoils our lives? Yes, let's just talk about one more tomorrow and then discuss the way out of this, the way of escape.